We're joined by Christopher Bennett, Director of Corporate Communications and Government Relations at Future Shop and Best Buy Canada. And for the software perspective, we're joined by Rory Capern, the Strategic Partnerships Lead at Google Canada. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. I want to I want to start with you, Christopher, and I want to ask about what's going on with PC sales right now. Are PC sales at your stores diminishing, flat, rising? Where where have things been over the last year? It's a great question, Howard. Are we we get asked it all the time. I get asked it by a lot of people. I think the the overwhelming uh, uh, consensus from people sort of out on the street is that they assume it is in decline when in reality from a from a Best Buy Canada from a future shop perspective it's actually growing for us uh, as a category PCs uh, grew uh, sales year uh, year over year from last year which is really great we're, we're always happy with that and in this uh, in this specific category it was 10% um, um, that it grew so you know there's there's certainly the case from the sales perspective from the, what the customer is telling us that I don't think that's even plateauing out I think it's going to continue to grow but are other devices growing faster than PC sales is that what we're seeing the various mobile platforms have gone from non-existence to very high growth while the PC continues to grow but much more slowly I, I think that's exactly what you're seeing uh, you know if you imagine the average household has got uh, multiple um, you know uh, kids they've got different uh, tablets and a smartphone together but typically you're going to see one maybe two PCs per home so that's not unusual to see that uh, especially with the innovation and the introduction of that new technology like the tablets or or the smartphones uh, very natural but we're also also finding that the PC category has even Evolved in such a way that it's it's adapting to uh, to work in an ecosystem like you mentioned earlier, and that's a really critical part of that that category's success uh, in the years to come is how it's going to play into that ecosystem and what that's going to do for our consumers. So, Christopher, how many of the customers who are coming into your stores are actually somewhat confused about what it is that they that they want, what device or devices they should be buying for what they want, and how many of them they know exactly what they want? They're just they're there to buy. They know it. I, I would say if you look back five years ago, that was certainly the case where there was a, an opportunity from, from the experience for us to help teach them a little, ba a little bit about it and, and, and how the PC could work in their, in their lifestyle. Uh, today's consumer that comes into Future Shop or Best Buy is very much educated on what they want. You know, this idea of showrooming that now exists has really... Uh, uh, and, and with smartphones and the, the availability of them, they're able to look in real time and compare prices, which is you know one of the reasons we created our price beat promise was to make sure that we, as it was being commoditized, we could address that. But they, they're smarter now. They know what they want it to do. They understand the, the, the nerve center, that critical center of the ecosystem that it plays in their home. And they're coming in with smarter questions. They want to know, how does it interact with my TV? Will I be able to sync it up with my, you know, my audio player and things like that, my digital camera? So it's interesting because we have now had our blue shirts and our product experts in our stores. You know, their their need to be ahead of where the technology is going has never been more important and, and more helpful to such a smart consumer. Christopher, uh, briefly, five years from now, what, how, what am I likely to have in my home? And I'm with Rory. I think he's nailed it. I, I think you're going to have a lot of the same uh, technology uh, tools in the home. They're going to be more efficient. They're going to be less expensive. Uh, and I think they're probably going to have more horsepower in the sense of their ability to compute and do larger things in smaller uh, frames. Gentlemen, you've answered all of my questions. We will end it right there. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having that us. Was Our expectations are very high when we meet with potential partners. This is the first time I've ever done a pitch like this. The wind beats against it. And then when the wind stops, it's saggy. I kind of refer to it as saggy pantyhose. <laughs> I bought the printer to the third, no, fourth sample in here. Uh, just going back to the, uh, the mesh. They work for the sign industry. They're gruff. <laughs> Ever done a pitch to a company or people who didn't know the, my company already? I thought you did a really good job on the sign. And you, you got the logo right, didn't she? And we were saying over the weekend, we wondered if you'd get the logo right, you know, especially with a tight timeline like that. And you nailed it. I mean, my, my gang worked all weekend to get ready. I have a really good group. What I'd like to do is for probably Sanath to, to follow up right with you. Yeah. And we try a test in one of our stores for actually an in in store product, and we can talk about where that's the good. test is. And that's fantastic. Price, yeah. Some pricing. I'm ac I actually am in shock. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't Don't expecting. That. Great. Great. Thank you.
Well, we know the world of gadgets is growing bigger and bigger with more options in tablets and smartphones than ever before. So what is the Canadian consumer really looking at? For the answer, Christopher Bennett joins us. He's the Director of Corporate Communications at Best Buy Canada. Thank you for coming in. Thanks very much for having and me. This come is great. bearing toys. I yes. brought fun yes. toys. It's, right. it's Friday. You should have some fun. Absolutely. Well, let's get started then. Um, why don't we start talking about smartphones? Because there's such a wide variety now out there uh, for people. What is the latest one? What's the one you brought in? Well, I mean, right now we're looking at the HTC one, okay? And this is the one I brought in. The, the truth is I would need way more hands to, to show you even the latest one this week, right? One right. of the biggest categories uh, in our stores, and certainly you know across Canada, it's the smartphone. I think it's become essential. I think it's the product that you've got to have. What's really interesting about it, though, is not just that the smartphones themselves are getting uh, you know thinner, they're getting better, their screens are getting bigger, the the operating systems are doing you know more fantastic things. But what's interesting is what consumers are doing with them. The real trend is that this has kind of become like your computer. Right? The smartphone is almost replacing the laptop in certain ways. It can do so many things the way a laptop can. You know, it would blow your mind how this has become the, the central nervous system for a lot of people's tech lives. It's really cool. But, uh, Christopher, it, just in terms of that, when I go into the store, I'm intimidated by that. So I need help from the salespeople to train me. And I understand that Best Buy does a lot of training. But how do you keep your people? Apple, for example, just gave their, their people a 25% pay raise. How do, you, how do you keep your people when you invest so much into training? Uh, that's a great question. I think, first of all, one of the things that really uh, separates us from a lot of our competitors is, I think, the, the long history that we have in consumer electronics. And we've got uh, an extraordinary tenure of a lot of employees who've been with us for a long time because of their passion for the technology. You know, you mentioned that, that we've got to teach people how to use the technology. It can be very confusing. And it's going, uh, it's, it's growing so exponentially and becoming more complex that that's never been more important. I think what's also very important is that at Best Buy, at Future Shop, we've got a service offering with Geek Squad or our Connect Pros that not only will uh, help you understand how the technology works here in store, but they'll come into your home. So whether it's you, your mom, your dad, your neighbor, and you want to understand how to work Facebook or you want to understand how to make videos or home movies off your phone and your camera, we can go into the home and do that in ways that, uh, you know, most people don't understand is going to simplify that for you in life. But how do you incent your salespeople? Uh, in the sense that they are uh, motivated to, to stay with us, is that what you're asking? Yes. Well, I is think it that it's based or? Uh, well, on the future shop side, yeah, we do have a commission based model. And uh, actually, this is the 30th anniversary of Future Shop. We've been around in Canada for 30 years, if you can believe it. And uh, so that model works there. Customers skew a little bit differently on the Future Shop side. They're a little bit more tech savvy. On the Best Buy side, where it skews sometimes just a little bit more female, that's a non-commission-based model. So I think what we've got is a great dual brand offering, uh, whatever the consumer is and whatever the questions they might have in consumer electronics. Before we leave the mobile phones, I, I, I've got to ask you about uh, what the status is of, of the, uh, the legal situation with the leak of the Samsung Galaxy C3. Um, yeah. I know that Best Buy really wanted to get to the bottom of, uh, of where that came from. So where do things stand there? Well, I mean, it's, it's late breaking news. I can appreciate that. Um, you know, I can't say too much about it right now because it is before the courts. Um, what I can tell you, though, is first of all, Samsung is a great partner of ours. They've been a partner for a long time. Uh, our entire business is built on great partnerships with, with other uh, vendors. And what's important to understand is that when leaks happen, it has a, an extraordinary ripple effect across the industry that can be felt even down at the consumer level. It's a really big deal and uh, you know, it's not simple. It's not something I can answer easily and certainly today because it is before the courts, I can't give you too much more on that. So, Well, let's move on then to speaking of Samsung. You've got yeah. another toy from <laughs> Samsung. This is a tablet that doesn't have an eye in front of it. So, <laughs> I know, you would got? think, I know. <laughs> Let me tell you, the, the Samsung Galaxy tablet, this thing is so hot right now. It's very, very popular. It works off the Android operating system. You know, I think from a tablet perspective, you know, as I said earlier, the smartphone has become kind of this central nervous center for a lot of people. It's almost like their laptop. What you're doing now on tablets that's really remarkable is it's evolved to not just a multimedia hub where you are consuming and watching TV. You can watch this show off the app on it. You can do a whole bunch of neat things. But what I've been really impressed with, and I think one of the interesting trends off the tablet, is the, uh, it's become kind of a family tool, uh, where the mobile phone is a little bit more of a personal device, we're really seeing the tablet's got a real big family effect on it, right? Uh, toddlers, I got a little taller, four-year-old four -year -old son, and, uh, you know, he's doing things on these tablets that, you know, when we were young, you can't even imagine, right? The explosion of Reading Rainbow, have you heard of this app that just came out? You know, they're doing things with kids and families and playing a 
part of the, the experience in the home that I don't think we even imagined even a year ago. So, so why it, not just put a phone in there and get rid of that? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a really cool idea, Patty. You know what? You kind of can. Right now, with the way Skype has evolved, you know, this becomes, in many ways, your new telephone. What you see here, in a lot of cases, if you're using, a, whether it's a FaceTime piece like on Apple, or if you are using you know, Skype or another one of those similar devices, you can actually have those interactions with audio, with video, and you don't even need to be using you know, your standard phone line or long distance, right? So it really has become that. I think we're, we're just at the beginning of how people are almost life hacking these tools to do really interesting things. So Canada is one of the few countries, maybe the only country, that's allowed to sell the, this particular tablet from, some, from Samsung. So does that mean there's a lot of units that you got to move in this country? You know, what I, I like to think of it as there's a lot of customers that we got to make really happy about this thing that really want to get their hands on it, right? The, the, the most difficult thing is when somebody comes in and they're so excited and we may not have one in stock yet. So we've gone to great lengths to create a web experience to help people understand before they even come into the store what our availability is. And we're doing a lot of really great things in our retail model to make sure that people can get the products that they want when they come in or whether they buy online. Because it's, it's like you said, these are really popular. So let's move on to now the biggest thing. It's like we're getting bigger. The screens are getting bigger yeah, in this yeah. interview. Here we go. Smart right, TVs. So oh. this is like, is this, does it make phone calls for you and cook dinner? Like what's the whole thing behind smart TVs? You're not far off from that. And I got to tell you, the other day I actually made a phone call from my television to my mom and dad right across the country. I'm based out of British Columbia. They're right here in, in Ontario. And I called them on the phone. We did it sitting there. And you can do that now. Your television can become your phone. It's not stuff that, you know, we, we just saw on the Jetsons. It's actually here. Smart TVs. TVs really make that possible, right? The way that they talk directly to your Wi-Fi or your internet connection in the house, it's really created a new platform where whatever you might have done on a computer or whatever you might have done uh, on your video game console, any of these devices, you can bring it right into the TV. So the smart TV is exactly as it sounds. It's bringing all your favorite apps and elements and things into one central system. I think that as more and more smart TVs uh, become popular and people adopt them, what you're going to really see is that we're going to really start to wonder can our computer, what, do we need a computer now? Is the, is the TV going to replace that? It's, I sometimes get really far ahead and I try to imagine it because, you know, 12 months from now, we're talking about things that I didn't think we would be. It's well, pretty cool. Well, when you do, let us know because uh, we're just looking for the next best, best thing. One more thing to buy. Yeah, that's absolutely, right. Absolutely. Thanks so much for your time, Christopher. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Best Buy and Future Shop have their own online video on demand service now called Cinema Now. We've unlocked the consumer. They're not tethered to one specific device or an ecosystem, but rather 160 devices, and that number's growing, you know, month over month, and they've got the ability to watch it whenever, wherever, and whatever they want. Cinema Now has all the latest movies on the day they're released on DVD, some even ahead of the release, as well as a library of current TV series and older movies and shows. The interface is easy to navigate. Videos rent for four to six dollars. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Well, you know what? There's a lot of stuff going on this weekend and if you want to be a nerd heaven, you can check out the Canadian Video Game Awards. Yeah, it's funny. We were talking to uh, one of our next guests, Victor, not very long ago. Of course, he's on the show all the time and he said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this together Lo and behold, sure enough, here we are on the verge of the Canadian Video Game Awards. Victor Lucas joining us, host of the Electric Playground and Future Shop's biggest gamer. Really, he's the director of corporate communications, but he is their biggest gamer, <laughs> uh, Christopher Bennett. Hey, guys, how are Hello. you? Very good. So, Thank Victor, you this mm -hmm. whole thing came together. Now, there's a huge event called Fan Expo happening this weekend, yes. and you managed to make both things come together. Well, this is the third year of the CVAs, which is blowing my mind, because uh, obviously this is a big endeavor every single year. But this year, uh, the Vancouver Fan Expo is happening. It's the first time that we've ever had a con in Vancouver of this scale, and they're bringing in all kinds of cool guests. And for those who are not in the lingo of what a con is, yeah. explain what is happening. A convention. There's going to be a lot of uh, sort of geek-friendly guests <laughs> and, and, you know, comic book people yeah. and yeah. movie people yeah. and TV show people coming to this big High convention. High-level nerd uh, stuff. Yes. Christopher, obviously, uh, Future Shop would be excited to be part of this, but you personally... Uh, I mean, you are a serious gamer, so to be part of this whole process and see it unfold and, and get to talk about the games has got to be pretty much yeah, a dream gig. Yeah, yeah, we had, you know, we've we've worked to, with uh, Victor and, and Greedy and his show for a while, and we we're really big fans of, 
you know, everything that they talk about in the entire industry, I mean, all you need to do is spend five minutes in a future shop, and yeah. you know you're kind of in that, 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 <laughs> that Canada's well. wonderland of gaming. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And so, <laughs> my wife loses me in there, she'll yeah. be doing something, and I'll just Does be wandering. Does she lose you, or yeah. do you get lost? <laughs> no, I get lost. Yeah. Yeah. Get That's lost, what I think maybe. happens. You can always find me near the yeah. setups. As yeah. a big gamer, Christopher, what is this about you playing an avatar as a woman, and the avatar that you play as looks like me? So, I have to tell you this, so this is very funny for all you uh, fans of there, if you have heard of this game, Mass Effect. Right? Yes, yes Luke, of course. Victor, yeah. I was at his place the other day, and I, he was down in his man cave. He's wearing a Mass Effect sweatshirt. Yes, I was. Yeah, he was. Uh, <laughs> so I didn't know that. So this is your avatar. Was, Wait, yeah. this is who you play. You play this is I changed it because you usually can be a guy, but I chose to be a girl. And my wife comes in there and she's like, "Why are you playing?" Commander Shepard as Fiona Ford. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, just because I thought that would be fun. My what big like guns Fiona. I have. Yes, you do. Weapons. You do. Yes, <laughs> weapons. You have weapons. 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 A lot of yeah. people play as Fem Shep, they call her, female Shepard. And uh, the woman that does the voice of Fem Shep is one of the presenters at the CVAs this weekend. So it all comes full circle. Okay, tell yeah. us a little bit more about the Canadian Video Game Awards themselves. What's well, going to be happening? Can anybody go? Anybody, well, we have 300 seats available to the public, so it's not very large, but that's sort of more of a factor of us putting uh, the Fan Expo Vancouver and the CVAs together very quickly. Uh, but it is open to the public, and there's going to be a lot of VIPs there from uh, different sectors of the industry, different game companies and stuff. Nice. Uh, but what's different this year is we have David Hayter as our host. I've hosted the last couple of years, but this year we're going with a very famous video game voice actor. He does the voice of Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. As you know. As yeah. I know. Yes, yes, Fiona, you've completed all the games you know, several I've, I've times. Just, I've completed them. Yes. I have no time for them anymore. But the other cool thing about David is that he's also the screenwriter behind X-Men and Watchmen. Oh, interesting. And oh, brilliant. He's got a, a multi-faceted awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah, career. No so he's kind of a geek legend, and he's really fired up. He's, all, he's been writing all kinds of stuff. Stuff, shooting little video bits. We've got a lot of other uh, cameos from cool uh, Canadian actors that are going to be a part of cool this. Cool presenters nice. and stuff. Presenters, yeah. And Billy Campbell and Eric Layden from The Killing are both going to be presenting. Yeah, yeah we know. Huge. Huge. Yeah. Huge. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, and let's talk about some of the games and some of the award categories. First one we're sure. going to talk about is Squibble. Squibble uh, is a cool little video game on the go nominee. It's, uh, you know, he's got a cute stretchy arm type thing and he's got to solve all these puzzles by cruising around inside of the world. And this category is getting more and more intense every single year. There's so much incredible development happening for mobile games it's amazing. in our country. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. Yeah, uh, Christopher, it's got to be fascinating for you guys to watch this at, at Future Shop because, of course, you know you're selling the gadgets that people are using for yes. this. Mm -hmm. Because more and more people, I know, I bought my iPad for me. My kids use this thing like you wouldn't believe, and it's all gaming. It did, and, and you know, Victor's always talked about the industry, but I think what people don't realize is that industry has evolved to such an extent that we have new categories and, and spaces within the industry. We have sections of Future Shop that didn't exist even two years ago right. because of gaming, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, even motion gaming, the mobile platforms, all the things you're talking about, what kids are doing. My wife is actually interested now. Sometimes she thinks it's a movie. Yeah. So, Victor, it's amazing. You know? We've known you for so long talking about video games, and it seems like it, no, it, it keeps getting bigger. Well, I had these crazy dreams that television around this stuff would be cool and, and, and be kind of interesting, but I didn't have any idea of how far this would all go or how ambitious people would be huge you know on the iPad and the iPhone have been such a disruptive force in our community you know yeah. there's so much development happening there and it's forcing all of the rest of the video game developers to kind of think up their game. Of the box. next year yeah. you guys should have uh, Tupac's hologram okay let's go to Assassin's Creed revelations tell us about this one this was the fourth in the Assassin's Creed uh, series it's not Assassin's Creed 4 they're actually doing Assassin's Creed 3 right now to be That's released right. later this That's year right. But this uh, gives you some new details on Ezio Auditore, who is the uh, Italian uh, hero in this franchise. Fantastic stuff. As you know. As yes, I know. As you know. <laughs> I'm glad you guys took my notes. Where is this one produced? Where's, where's this is Ubisoft uh, Montreal, and uh, it's a, a beautiful game. You know, he goes to all new areas, and he, you have a little bit of uh, a connection to the, the first Assassin's Creed in this game as well. And it's just robust. It's huge. And it's a great and time filled. to talk about NHL 12 yes. uh, because uh, we love yeah. our hockey, especially today yeah. when we're celebrating yeah. a win. Thank God, huh? Oh, this game. That was close. Yeah, uh, and it, NHL that's 12. All right. is... That's all right. I don't mind close. It's a reverse back. sweep, you guys. It, it, yes. it seem, if you put it on simulation, it seems to think we're going to be fine. Yeah. So, I don't that's, know. That's what EA predicted this yeah. year, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we seem to be okay. again for the playoffs because they were almost bang on last year, weren't they? Uh, I think they were, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. Very close. It was scary. Yeah. Yeah.
I they think, did predict us. I mean, this is a beautiful, this is a juggernaut game that yeah. sells incredibly well in Canada. It's, uh, you know, it's just beautifully produced by hockey fanatics, you know, and there's no no question it's going to be up Christopher, for Christopher, what kind a of, CBA. I mean, when a big title like this is going out, whether it's Assassin's Creed or NHL or uh, Mass Effect or whatever it is, when these come out, what kind of effect do you guys see in the stores? Like, Well, there's there's two, there's there's the, the advanced hype and the buzz, the excitement around the game, what it's going to do, right? The press will look at that. The gamers themselves, they anticipate it. Mm -hmm. Then there's that side of it where, and I, I really mean this, you know, when, when Electric Playground gets involved, they will really deconstruct these games and they'll review that and that really gives us an indication of you know how many do we need to have these available you yeah, know games that EP or, or, or Metacritic some of these spots will rate higher than others we know they're gonna sell out so we do sometimes we open the store at midnight you know yeah. we have to yeah and so we really look to to Victor and them and, and the, the press that looks at it to try to anticipate it because so serving the community I mean this right? is so a much. cultural thing that we're talking yeah. about and, and honestly one of the things that I'm realizing is that this is the greatest cultural export that Canada has right now more people are playing Canadian video games yeah. than seeing our movies or our TV shows or yeah. listening to our Absolutely. music you yeah. know and it's going all over the world well, and these an are very big of, titles of our artistic temperament in this country yeah. that that we've taken this thing that's that started and, and goes around the world, but yes. we're doing it better than anybody. almost anybody. Yeah, I mean, we have the technological temperament as well. We have a fascination with computers, and our, our education system kind of speaks to the to yeah. the skill set that these developers have. Okay, here's the deal. Too. In case you haven't heard, the Fan Expo is happening over the weekend. Yes. Uh, you can get tickets to find out more. And for more information on the Canadian Video Game Awards and to get tickets, as we mentioned, you can go and uh, see it all happen. You can go to CanadianVideoGameAwards.com. Guys, right. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.